Hi everyone, today I'm going to share my report on, or my, my, my article on our law journal. And uh, the overall theme is legal innovation and updates. And I chose a topic that is related to environmental law because I was able to join and participate uh, in the uh, uh, Stetson International Moot Court Competition Southeast Asian Rounds held in UP Diliman uh, last February 2024. And this is my presentation uh, in relation to that article. We were able to join, um, by the way, uh, we were able to win uh, Best Overall Memorial, and also uh, we belong to the uh, top eight or to the quarter finalists. So that is why I chose the topic, this topic, uh, for my Law Journal article, and I'm going to share it to you right now. But before I start, let me uh show you some pictures and you guess what uh what this uh term is in relation to uh climate okay can you guess can you guess guess this term okay the answer is heat index okay next okay high electric bill okay it's just who among you here that have been experiencing five digits uh, five digits bill or even six digits and every time you open the electric bill it's a suspense okay only one picture can you guess okay inflation okay next okay heat related mental illness such as uh, irritability anxiety or depression so the title of my article is for a livable climate legal and policy innovations for a net zero 2050 and what is net zero by 2050? That's the question. What and why is it relevant today? So net zero is a study that outlines the, the policies, technologies, and behavioral changes that we need to do so that we can achieve net zero by 2050 or net zero carbon dioxide emissions. In other words, the, the more or how much we emit is also the amount of uh, carbon dioxide that we absorb. Why is it important? Because of the adverse impacts of, uh, of or in our planet if net zero is not achieved. The following adverse impacts are released by the International Panel or Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change or IPCC. IPCC is an international scientific body composed of experts um, uh, meteorolo meteorologists, and uh, they provide the latest scientific uh, research on climate or on climate change to help policymakers make informed decisions. Okay, so the purpose is to provide the latest scientific research on climate change to help policymakers make informed decisions. So this room is filled with future policymakers lawmakers and lawyers and we are the target of the ipcc so the first reason why net zero is important is because of hot extremes heat extremes or hot extremes such as heat waves have become more frequent and more intense across most land regions since the 1950s rain or precipitation have also become more intense and more frequent since the 1950s as you can see in this chart from the nasa 1950s, of course, 1940, there's World War II, there's nuclear bomb. But starting 1950s upwards, the average global temperature is becoming uh, more and more, uh, it's becoming higher and higher through the years. With high confidence, the IPCC states that human activities are one of the main drivers of climate change. Next reason is because hot extremes will lead to coastal flooding and displacement of coastal communities. So in the Philippines, they have identified the ECT, Cebu, Manila, Iloilo, which will, which will be the first ones to suffer from the increased uh, sea uh, levels or water levels. And then also sanitation or contamination of fresh water resources or aquifers. So if sea levels rise, the salt water, instead of having its border, in a certain level, it will uh, go inwards and will contaminate our uh, freshwater sources such as aquifers and rivers. 
leading to uh, also food shortage and damage. Also, it will, uh, uh, instead of brackish water, uh, more and more fresh water will become brackish or will have salt in it, and it will also damage our food, uh, food chain, okay, or food supply. It will also lead to ocean acidification because uh, studies show that carbon dioxide is absorbed actually by the ocean and 30% uh, uh, of it, 30% of uh, carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean. So if there's more carbon dioxide, then it will lead to acidic, more uh, acidity in the ocean and cause, and will cause the death of, uh, of marine life. And of course, drought, which uh, is familiar, Right now in our province, I think the uh, our province has a uh, few weeks or months ago has declared a state of emergency or state of calamity in some areas. And it will also lead to food insecurity. And since because of the law of supply and demand, law of supply will, will go low and prices will go up. And that's inflation. Next, extreme heat also increases demand for electricity due to the use of air conditioning and refrigeration. Sino din ang bill nyo tas taas nyo? Okay. This can strain energy systems, leading to blackouts, brownouts, and high utility bills. And high temperatures also increase the rate of evap evaporation of water reservoirs, reducing the availability of clean water. It reduces the livability and well-being in cities and other areas. Of course, high temperatures and humidity have been linked to mental health problems such as suicide, depression, anxiety disorder, and bipolar disorder. So, what should we do as a response? Fact is, climate change response can come from all aspects. Um, scientific, technological, environmental, social. But the article focuses only on legal and policy innovations. First, one of that is through NDC. This is the most uh, where, where most countries are involved. This is under the Paris Agreement where countries submit their commitment on how to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions. They articulate their promises. And NDCs, or Nationally Determined Contributions, outline each country's effort to reduce the GHG, mitigate climate change, and enhance adaptation measures. Second innovation is financial incentives. Some countries like the UK granted tax benefits for all the new homes with electric vehicle or electric vehicle charging points. India transferred or collected taxes from coal and incentivized the use of renewable energy. Third is walkable cities. This is an implementation of, uh, of cities and this is more on urban planning and it, it involves more LGUs local government units. London, for example, created uh, timed closures for vehicles and car-free days, creating better streets for walking and cycling, improving air quality. Imagine you can own, you have all your needs within a 15-minute walk. Also, Paris adopted this 15-minute city because a walkable city is a livable city. I think I saw that slogan in Manila. Okay. This one is in the Philippines, ban on single-use plastics. I think in Baguio, one time, I think six years ago, uh, when I went to SM Baguio, I, I asked for a plastic bag and they would not, uh, they, they do not have it because the city has banned the use of single plastics. Next is Indonesia has this policy innovation called floating solar farm. It saves space because if solar panels are placed on land, the land for agriculture might decrease so it saves space so the land can still be used for agriculture and other purposes this one is underwater turbines which uh, is practiced in china and other countries of course it saves space as well emissions trading system or ets is an eu policy european european union that serves like a carbon market here states uh, states give companies um, carbon permits and companies might uh, use it up, all up, or uh, lessen their carbon emissions. As a result, they have this carbon allowance and they can trade it for money in exchange for other companies that have emission uh, shortages. So this encourages more companies to reduce their carbon emissions. Next is climate financing. 
This policy is provided for under Article 9 of the Paris Agreement, wherein developed countries provide developing countries such as Philippines money to develop or establish their climate change reduction or mitigation programs. So this one is taken from Asian Development Bank, wherein they provided $10 billion for the Philippines to address the challenges of climate change. Next is CCUS. So, so climate financing can be used for, for this. No? It can use, be used to build CO2 vacuum cleaners. Usually this is for developed countries. And for some developing countries like Africa, they have these algae farms because algae are known for uh, capturing carbon dioxide from the air and they can also be used as food source. And it is also cheaper to build. So here in the Philippines, what could be the waste? No? It could be reforestation and other things. The last but not the least is a giant parasol. This is a futuristic concept which involves putting a large infrastructure in the outer space, such as a glass. Some say it's moon dust. Some say it's a, a flying drones. The, the idea is to provide shade on the earth. So this could be quite expensive or could be very difficult to, uh, and it would demand a lot of technology and human power still. That's why it's called a, uh, a futuristic concept. But as they say, uh, this was inspired by the Pinatubo, you know, Mount Pinatubo uh, uh, event that uh, when it erupted, it provided clouds in the air and it has reduced the temperature uh, in the area, in, in, I think in Pampanga or in Zambales, you know, uh, for, for years because of that um, canopy theory or parasol theory. So in... Uh, in conclusion, in summary, climate change can be addressed by fundamental change in behavior and the legal and policymaking industry has a crucial role in helping transform behaviors and practices. Thank you very much.